Hello pre-algebra students to our video on scientific notation or how to write very large or very small numbers efficiently. So this is what we're, we're doing here. We're taking numbers that are very large or very small. So one example of each here and writing it a different way, a special way that has a pattern that we can use. Um, and let's get started with that. Okay. It's writing large or small numbers using the product of a decimal and a power of 10. We use these in scientific calculations. So um, numbers that are written in scientific notation have three parts. A decimal number that's between 1 and 9.99. Um, so here's 7.25 times 10 to the fifth. Um, so the 7.25 with the decimal portion. The symbol from um, multiplication, which is usually going to be an X. Um, sometimes you'll see it as a dot, but... Usually it's an X. And the number 10 raised to some power, which could either be a positive or a negative exponent. Why do we have scientific notation? Well, some numbers are just way too large or way too small to express in standard notation, the regular way that you write numbers in mathematics. Here's a couple of examples of really small ones, like right here is the mass of one proton. And just to quickly show you what we're talking about here, the mass of one proton, if I wrote the number out, would be, let's see, 0 0.1234567910. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. This would be the, the mass of one proton. And as you can see, you can't even um, type that across the calculator that you use in the classroom. So that's not a useful value. That's not a useful number at all. But using this notation here with the exponent, that's useful. It's smaller. So those are a couple of examples of really tiny numbers. So you can see here the mass of a neutron, and here's the mass of an electron, even smaller. But then there's also this funky number here, and this fun little meme, this guy's name was Avogadro, which is not important for class, but it's just a, a name here. And this number is what we call Avogadro's constant. And when you learn chemistry, this is a number that you will end up committing to memory. So maybe you'll look back on this in a couple of years and, and, and remember what I was talking about. But this is kind of cool. This is um, it's called a mole. And it's not a critter. It's actually the number of molecules of a substance in a particular amount of that substance. Um, and it's a, it's a constant that actually happens. Um, it, it's a pretty cool relationship. But you're going to have to wait for chemistry, or you can hop on Khan Academy and watch a video about this um, if you would like. But make sure you finish this one first. Alrighty. So let's look at what scientific notation actually is when you're writing the actual math. Well, we're going to do first converting a number from standard to scientific notation. So my suggestion is that you listen and read through this with me and not copy anything quite yet, and then go back and pause it. And the cat just jumped on the iPad. I will save that for you guys so you can get to see that lovely display of um, laser pointer. Thanks, Padraig. So converting a number from standard scientific notation. Let's listen all the way through, then pause, then write it down. Um, yes, you want the general gist of all of this, so unfortunately you do have to do some copying, but you'll get over it. Okay, first of all, you're going to place a decimal point after the first non-zero digit that's in the number. Okay, the second step is that you're going to count the number of decimal places that you had to move the decimal point to get to that new location. And then finally, you're going to write the number as a product of the decimal that you got and a power of 10 using the number of decimal places moved as the exponent. So you're going to end up with a decimal times and then 10 and then the number of places you moved to that decimal point, that's going to be your exponent. For numbers that are larger than 1, so the original number was a big, big number, larger than 1. The exponent will be a positive. But for numbers that are smaller than 1, so a decimal that's less than one whole thing, that exponent, that's going to be negative. And we'll explain further in a minute what that means exactly. Here we have our first examples for scientific notation. So these are all numbers that are bigger than 1. So that means that n is going to be a positive. So I'll put right here, n is greater than 0. So the first direction was to put the decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So first of all, where's the original decimal point? Well, it's at the end of the number. 
because a whole number has a decimal point at the end, we could just as well say 0. .0. So 2,000 and 2,000 0 are the same thing. Now how many places do I need to move that decimal point? Well, I need to move it to here, because that's at the first non-zero digit is the first digit. And I'm moving it three places. So I'm going to take the number that I now have, which is 2.000. I don't need more than one zero there, so I'm just going to put 1, times 10. And we're going to put the exponent down as the number of places I had to move that decimal point, which is 3. So this is like saying 2 times, right here, 2 times 1,000. So that's just a shorter way to write. It's not really shorter, is it? It's not really shorter to write 2,000 that way. But with these very large numbers, it might be. So let's go ahead and do the next one. So remember, original decimal point, it's now moving here. So 6.8 is going to be the decimal portion times 10. And then we're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6.8 times 10 to the fifth power. If you think you're getting the hang of this, try the next one. I do want you to notice real quick before we go on to that one. You can pause it and try it if you want. But if you notice, in this one, the number of zeros was the exponent because there's only one non-zero digit here. But in this one, the number of zeros on here, which is 4, was not equal to the exponent because 8 takes one of those places that we're counting for decimal places. So do not think that the exponent equals, so exponent does not equal number of zeros. So for my folks that are not listening to the audio, turn it up and listen. The exponent, so there's four zeros here, and the five for the exponent over here. They are not the same thing. They are not equal. That's what this is telling you right here. Not equal. So let's do the next one. You should have 5.94, putting the decimal point after the first non-zero digit, counting back, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so times 10 to the seventh power. Now the last one looks a little strange, but remember, as long as you just follow the rules, 6.2 times 10, well, decimal point moved one place, so 10 to the first, or just 6.2 times 10, either one of those would be fine. Even though it looks awkward, we can still follow the rules of scientific notation and, and put it into um, that scientific notation. Okay, let's try some that are smaller than one. So each number on this one, if you look, is a decimal that has zero point and is smaller than one. Okay, so if you see up here, they're going to be negatives. These ends are going to be negatives. So if we thought about, if you know, if I had just made a positive end, I could have put n less than zero. But I was trying to make a point here that the exponent will be negative. Okay, so... I've got my decimal point's original location. Now I have, I see a decimal point, so I don't have to think about how it's at the end of the number. It's not, it's here. And we actually want to, in this one, we do want to actually put that decimal point after the last digit that we give us for this number because the first non-zero digit is that last digit, 3. So the first digit that is not a 0 from left to right, that's going to be our factor. And we can put 3.0 again just to indicate that there's nothing that came after the 3 other than a 0 because I could keep putting zeros here if I wanted to forever and ever. Um, so anyway, how did I move that? Well, I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces. And since these this original number is less than 1, I'm going to use a negative 4. Now just for a second, let's stop and let's think about what this means. Okay. Well, we know 10 to the first means 10. 10 to the 0 is just a 1. Think number of zeros. So this, powers of 10, is number of zeros. So how about um, 10 to the negative 1? That's going to be 1 tenth. So it's 0 0.1. And 10 to the negative 2, that's going to be 1 hundredth. So two decimal places behind. And 10 to the negative 3, that's going to be 1 thousandth. So these powers of 10 are all about moving that decimal point. This is like your metric line in science. So 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4 is actually saying 3.0 times 10 to the negative 4. Let me go over here and write it. 0 0.0001. So tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So 3 times 10 to the negative 4 is really saying 3 ten thousandths. Okay, so that's the general idea. 
with the scientific notation. That's what those negative exponents are doing. So they're giving us tiny numbers, not negative numbers. Tiny numbers, not negative numbers. So coming back down here, first non-zero digit is this 2. So 2.24 2 times 10 to the, well, what did we do? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we moved it six spaces, and since it's a smaller number, that's a negative 6. Okay, next one, first non-zero digit, so 8.11 times 10 to the negative 2. Right here, first non-zero digit. This one we have to count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this is 1.15 times 10 to the negative ninth. So what you have to be cognizant of, thinking about, what you have to be thinking about, is that these negative exponents are required because these numbers are very small. Okay? Um, when you're in class the next time, jot this down on the margin of your paper, um, I want you to get a calculator, and I want you to try out these powers of 10 with your exponent button. I will show you in class, but you need to remind me. Okay, remind me. Get a calculator. Remind me. Okay, let's talk about the other direction. How about if we have something in scientific notation and we want to convert it to standard notation? Well, first of all, we're going to write the decimal portion of the number, leaving space to write on each side of it. Because we've got to move the decimal point, kind of the opposite of what we did going the other way. If the exponent is positive, move the decimal point to the right, filling in the empty spaces with zeros, and then finally put commas into the number where necessary. If the exponent is negative, you're going to move the decimal point to the left, filling the empty spaces with zeros where necessary. Then you're going to put a zero to the left of the decimal point. So either way, what you're doing is you're using that power of 10. If you're multiplying by a power of 10 where the exponent is positive, you're making the number bigger. So you're moving that decimal point to the right. If you're, multi if you're um, converting one where the exponent is negative, you're multiplying by something that's less than 1, that's a fraction, okay, a, a power, um, a divided power of 10, right, so you're moving that decimal point to the left. A number can only have one decimal point, remember that. You are moving the decimal point to a new location. So you got to remember not to try to use the old one. And you cannot have numbers with two decimal points in them. Inevitably, someone puts that on a paper, and I'm always kind of wondering, how, you know, how does that work exactly? Okay, so each of these is given to you already in scientific notation. You're going to convert it to standard. So we're going to take the decimal portion, which in this case is just the 3, writing it with plenty of space. A 3 has a decimal point right there. And we're going to take our decimal, our, and we're going to move it five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to fill those in with zeros. And we're going to recognize this new number is 300,000. And that's what I want to see. I do not want to see the answer try to look like this. I want the answer to be written like a number. Okay. All right, next one. We're going to write our decimal portion. Whoops, switch to the writing tool. Positive 8, so I'm going to move my decimal uh, point 8 spaces to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to fill in the empty spaces with zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's going to be 1, 7, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's make sure that's right. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's 170 million. 170 million was 1.7 times 10 to the 8th power. Okay, 8.92. Decimal point, 3 spaces to the right. 1, 2, 3, 8,920. Probably not a number you'd usually see in scientific notation, but that's okay. All right, and this one, this one's not even going to turn out not to be a decimal. 9.512, and we're moving it two places. That does point two places to the right. One, two. So that's 951 and two tenths. So again, some of these are not really logical to have in scientific notation, but it doesn't matter. You're still going to follow the rules of, oop, equal sign missing, follow the rules of conversion, and, and that's how you're going to do them. So let's go through our last set. 
Okay, our last set, and these, oh, I forgot this up here. So this is where you're going to have m times um, 10 to the, and these are negative, negative exponents. Okay, so the first one is 8 times 10 to the negative 5. So I'm going to write my 8. Decimal point goes after the 8. Negative 5. So I'm making a number that's smaller than 1. That's what those negative exponents mean. So I'm multiplying by... I think it's five one hundred thousandth maybe. So one, two, three, four, five decimal places to the left. So that means I have zero point zero 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 eight. And that is equal to eight times ten to the negative five. So what is that now? That's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. So eight hundred thousandths. Let's do the next one. We'd put in your nine point seven. And you move your decimal point eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Gets a little crowded sometimes. Sometimes I miss judge the amount of space I'm going to need. So this is a very small number. So that's, well, if it's eight decimal places and the nine took up one of them, it's seven zeros. So remember, we're not, three, four, five, six, seven. We're not saying that the exponent equals the number of zeros. We are not. We are not at all. It's number of decimal places. Okay, 3.12. We've got a negative three exponent. So one, two, three spaces to the left. And there you have, so that's another one that ended with the uh, hundred thousandths. All right, and then the last one, 2.21 times 10 to the negative one one decimal place, so 0 0.221. So again, not a very logical number to have in scientific notation, but you see the general idea. Now we're going to practice with this in the classroom. And if you've um, got questions, bring them to class. Um, otherwise, I guess I will see you guys in class.